Uh, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the prosec U.S. prosecutor out in New Mexico. Uh, there's a new report out uh, in Rolling Stone saying uh, that maybe the election is already stolen. Uh, it's an investigation by Robert Kennedy and Greg Pallas that was released yesterday. Uh, and one of the things in that report, they said a fired U.S. prosecutor, and then this would be the, I think, the one from New Mexico, levels new charges accusing leaders of his own party, Republicans, with criminal acts in an attempt to block legal voters as fraudulent. Uh, they go on in that report to talk about <clears throat> that Obama has, re you know, more than, more than 2.7 million people have had their registrations rejected around the country. And in Colorado, which has a Republican Secretary of State, there's been one in six, I believe, uh, have been <clears throat> taken off the list. So do you, do you, as someone who's in charge of voter registration here in Illinois, do you he talk to people in other states? Do you hear uh, these kind of reports? <clears throat> and how? Well, Mike, I, Michael, I don't hear a lot. I can tell you what I, what I do know, which is limited. I can't respond to the number of people who, in fact, may be kind of kicked off the rolls. I do think there's some confusion there. And no offense to, to Kennedy and others, but there may be some confusion there over how people canvass. But let me tell you what I do believe is a voter suppression scheme, which fortunately, of all places in Ohio, the Supreme Court actually ruled in our favor. Uh, in other words, the real clever people in the, in the White House understand, with the new laws, if, in fact, you say, that the voter registration laws and the, the voter registration names that you've got have to match identically, okay, with your records. So what happens? What's your middle name, Michael? Gaylord. Okay. Well, let's say G. Okay. So let's say I register you and I put Michael instead of G. I put Michael B. James. Okay. It could happen. Mistakes Bold. may happen. The question is: Are you still the same guy with the same driver's license? Everything. You are. The problem is what they tried to do in Ohio. Republicans again to force the Democratic Secretary of State to have everything match identically. Now the point is that would knock you off the voting rolls, and it shouldn't. Now again, if you're making it up, you should be knocked off. But if it's just because someone had a typo, which happens when you have all this data entry, and they don't, they put West instead of uh, East on Lund Avenue, that's the kind of thing that some people are trying to take to what they call the letter of the law, which I'm saying is blatantly an attempt to knock those people off. Now, ironically, the U.S. Supreme Court knocked that down. And so there was a big victory for us that, that this kind of tactics we're talking about in Ohio seemed to have failed. But so you can see how if someone plays what you might call the letter of the law, which they shouldn't in my book, the result is people would be knocked off the rolls. Here in Illinois, uh, voter registration is up, and you, uh, you have a, there's a lot of people encouraging us to go vote early. Uh, someone said to me today, well, they really like going on Election Day. What's your take on uh, reasons why people should get it done early? Well, I think people should do whatever they want to. Uh, the, re the reason that I introduced Motor Voter in Illinois was simple, is that we're the only major democracy in the world that votes on a working day. Uh, others vote on weekends or holidays, and that's what it ought to be. And I, what I tried to do is to pass a law which would allow everyone to vote by mail as well. But that didn't pass here in Illinois. So the next step was, I said, listen, then we have more election days. Because we know that generally it's the poor and the disenfranchised that have the most problems on Election Day. They're the ones that, you know, the mother gets so sick they have to go, uh, go take care of the person who can't vote. So by having early voting, all it means is for about 18 days or whatever the number is, it's Election Day. It's, it's really difficult for us. It's like all of a sudden we got many, many Election Days. But it's great for voters because they're not sure. They don't know when they'll get called out of town. They don't know when one of the kids gets sick and they, they can't get out. So now they have choices. The lines generally are better in early voting, although I'm, I was telling you early voting is going so well now, there will be lines in, in many places, so just be patient or go to another place. The nice thing about early voting in both the city of Chicago and in suburban Cook is because of electronic voting that you can go to any site. You can live in Rogers Park and go visiting your, your friends in the south side and vote there if you want. In Rogers Park, where do we vote? Over Potawatomi Park? Remember, I don't do the city, but I, I assume it's still Potawatomi Park. Right. But I shouldn't say because I don't. All right, right, let's. I think it is. But uh, one last question, <laughs> David Orr. Uh, people have uh, a lot of fear uh, based on some uh, realities from the past 
about uh, these electronic voting machines. So there's a company called Debolt, I believe, and uh, they've been connected to Bush. And so there's, you know, the there's some people who uh, who really think there's conspiracies. What's your take on uh, the automatic or the on the voting electronic voting machines and uh, maybe their future? Well, I think uh, we always should be vigilant because. Uh, growing up here and running against the machine way back in 1978 and 79, I would say today what you would say today about the White House, in this case it was the Democrats, but they will literally do anything, including beating you up, to win. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I have the same view of some people in the White House. They will do anything. So we should be vigilant. We should be vigilant about the people we put in there as judges. We should be vigilant about the equipment. However, I do think um, some of the, quote, hysteria is simply that. Uh, what we do in Illinois, and particularly here in Cook County, is we probably have the most elaborate security of anywhere in the, in the country, knock on wood, of course. But one, uh, we have two critical things that people need to understand. First of all, we have the voter verifiable paper trail. If you do vote on what we call the touchscreen or electronic voting, what that means is if you push Obama and you say, well, I'm, I'm touching this electronic screen, how do I know? Well, there's a separate paper trail connected that you can look at when you get through voting, and it should say Obama or you better make a lot of noise. Uh, but that's one very important thing that all the reformers ask for. In Illinois, we demanded that be part of the law before we had electronic voting. And secondly, and very important, we do a very elaborate audit, way beyond what the law requires. And after the election, we, we compare every vote. Okay, we doesn't have Michael's James name on the ballot, obviously, but we can, uh, we'll, we'll find out. Let's say he voted for Obama. We check the electronic record and compare it with the paper record. It's an enormously difficult task, but every time that has come out correct. That's important, because if it didn't, you'd have something else real quickly we're doing. We're doing forensic testing, which is very important, because the biggest threat on this is not, is, it really has to do with someone trying to install some sort of, you know, dangerous software. Forensic testing can take a snapshot of all of your key programs at certain times, before the election, election day afterwards. But let me conclude, if I might, is that my, at least my experience, I think we should be vigilant, but 99% of all the things that happen are human error. I'll give you an example. It used to be when we had punch card or paper ballots and so forth, the error would be you'd have a split precinct, which means you've got more than one ballot style, and the judge, sweet, older person, doing their best but overwhelmed, gives Michael James the wrong ballot. And Michael, it's the same ballot for president, but for state rep, instead of having Mr. Osterman, he's got somebody else. He may or may not catch it. That's an error. The same thing can happen with electronic voting, but now there's some sort of grand conspiracy. With electronic voting, the difference is Michael comes in and the person codes his ballot, which we have to because there's so many, and instead of pushing in 61478, they push in 61476. Okay? So the same thing could happen. The ballot's correct on most things, but when it comes to state rep, because he's in a split precinct. Doesn't happen much, but that's wrong, but it's a human error. It's not a, quote, electronic conspiracy. So, but I think the jury's still out. I think we have to be vigilant. We've tried real hard because we actually work with the, with the, uh, the scientific critics, and that helps us. Uh, unfortunately, many of my colleagues just dismiss them. We work with them, and they give us a lot of good ideas, and we try and institute those ideas so we can ideally have the best of both worlds. So I really don't think one has to worry. David Orr, I want to thank you so much for coming on live from the heartland here on the 18th of October, getting ready for the 2008 presidential election. Your work is cut out for you in the next few weeks. Sure. We wish you well, and the main thing is everybody go vote. Let's have a big round of applause thank for you. our neighbor and friend, David Orr. You are listening to Live from the Heartland here, the Heartland Cafe. Uh, we bring you this show every Saturday morning on WLUW 88.7.